Hey coin collectors, it's Dan the Collecting Man here with this special video. I was very lucky to be given a copy of this special release book that's coming out uh, this week, uh, Coin Collecting 101. So this is not the official uh, book, obviously it comes in uh, a more of a design like this. So I'll just show you on the screen uh, what the book looks like. But I was given this special early release to review the book and review it. So I thought this is... Um, a great opportunity for me to go through the book and I'm going to talk through some of the key chapters in the book and how that applies to me and coin collecting as well. So coin collecting 101, the beginner's guide you'll ever need to building, identifying, preserving and cashing in on your collection by Thomas Knowles. So really, really good book. I was read it over the last week as well. So uh, over a, around 170 pages. So definitely uh, a lot of content there, a lot of good information around coin collecting so let's go through it in a bit of a detail uh, just so you can see it for yourself as well um, just to also to note that I've got a link down below to the Amazon uh, page where the book is so if you're as you're going along and you're really interested in uh, purchasing that book the links just down below uh, for you to purchase and have a look at the book on Amazon as well so to start off with we go over the Alua of coin collecting so what is it that really encapsulates coin collecting and that's one of the things i found really fascinating around this book as well is it really goes to the heart of what coin collecting is so what is it that makes us get excited about a new coin or finding a really old coin um, from a collection or going through some treasure so what is that allure what gets us excited about about the treasure it's almost like the treasure hunting of coin collecting as well so that's one thing i found uh really neat in this book it's got a really good storytelling around that kind of fun and adventure of hunting for coins and finding the, the almost like the golden coin well what's that special coin you're looking for as well so then it goes through the different types of coins to collect as well so are you after the the older coins some of these really old nice uh coins as well are you after some of the more modern day coins like like these ones here so this is the one in australia the new king effigy is that something that you like to collect or is it like these uh colored two dollar coins is that something that you're interested in collecting as well or is it like the one ounce uh coins as well so the one ounce silver coins there's all sorts of different coins so some people like the pre decimals so i've got heaps of these old Australian pre-decimals, the one pennies and half pennies as well. So if you like something a bit older as well. And some people also love your one and two cent coins as well. So I know uh, for a lot of Australians, there's still people out there trying to collect these uh, old one and two cent coins as well, or is it 50 cents or something like that. So definitely uh, I find that's a good part of coin collecting is what kind of niche, what kind of thing do you look uh, to collect from your coin collection. I have a bit of a, a scatter, a bit of everything, because I just any kind of coin, personally, I really enjoy collecting and owning as well. Uh, the last few years have really been focusing on bullion and investment. Uh, they're the kind of things I like, so I really like the, the silver and gold kind of coins. Uh, anything like that really is something that I enjoy personally myself. Uh, and also goes through mint mark. So what is a mint mark as well? So, so give you a quick example of this. This is the 2012 Red Poppy, probably one of the most famous collected coins in Australia right now. Uh, and this one has a tiny little C mint here. So that's what everyone's looking for. You can see it's got 2012 C. So that's got a C mint mark, which means it was made at the Canberra Mint. Uh, and it makes it extra collectible, more desirable from a collecting point of view as well. So uh, we also have here from another Australian point of view, this is the kangaroo, silver kangaroo. And over to the right here, we've got a little P for Perth Mint. So that's a, another one that people like to collect. So often there's um, special mint marks depending on what uh, mint it was actually manufactured. So in Australia, we only heavily have uh, two core mints that are manufactured manufacture coins as well so then it goes through the the investment potential of coins so um, obviously a lot of people know that you, you have your silver one ounce coins and two ounce coins this is where you can get some good investments uh, from a, a silver point of view as well um, but then you also have some of these more high-end ones so this one here for me is um, a 2013 Vietnam War coin uh, very limited at 5,000 um, 
a mint state of 70, so that's a perfection score. So you can't, this, this coin is perfect. Uh, and these, I, I reckon, I think I bought it for around $75, $80, uh, only less than a year ago, and now it's already worth about around $2,500 being sold. So this is for, for me, uh, definitely been a really, really good investment. Uh, another one is like these uh, sovereigns as well. So this is a, a gold sovereign, uh, and as you can see here, this is the coronation version. So this is the proof version, so really collectible. Uh, definitely, once you've purchased it, you know you're gonna add a lot of value in it in the long term as well. So there's definitely some money to be made in coin collecting, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so I have a bit of a mix of that. Also, the book does cover off making sure you don't get scammed as well, because a big part of buying these bullion coins is you want to make sure that you don't get scammed as well. So this is obviously the Silver Eagle, probably the most infamous, famous um, silver coin in the world. And this is one that I bought on eBay uh, for a couple of bucks. So same year, so it's 2019, exactly same year. But you can see the, the lettering is slightly different on the coin and the luster and just some of the core details. Obviously a little bit smaller as well. So it definitely hasn't got the, the width and it's quite uh, a bit smaller as well when it comes to the width. And on the back, the back is probably the closest uh, compared to the front. So it does look a little bit the same, but you can see that it's almost like the silver's starting to come off on this one as well. So this cost me all of a dollar, but if you were to buy the real one, like this one, you're looking at probably at $50, $60 Australian for, for a real uh, Silver Eagle as well. So you've got to be careful not to, not to get scammed. There's also people buying these. So this is something I also bought on eBay just more for the show of it. These are the, your graded coins. So you can see these, you send your coins off to graded. Uh, some people are buying these off eBay, these little packs. You can get these little fake stickers, get it printed on. And I could easily put that coin in there and sell it as a genuine coin for 100 to 200 dollars when I've probably spent less than five dollars on this whole little set as well. So you've really got to be careful and know what you're looking for, making sure you know the companies, because uh, these are obviously fake companies that they've made up as well, and, and being able to tell the difference between a real coin and a fake coin. So I find for me, personally, I often buy for a mint or a known uh, seller to make sure I don't get faked as well. The next section he goes into coin grading and valuation. So this is something that I've been really focusing on over the last year, is making sure my coins are graded. So these are some of the coins, more popular coins that I've had graded over the last year as well. Uh, so this one's the Coronation Silver. This is the Red Poppy, one, like I said, the most collectible one. And this is probably the most uh, valuable uh, colored $2 coin in Australia right now. So like I said, this one is definitely holding a lot of value. Uh, this one, I think, will hold a lot of value in the long term. So at the moment, it's probably only up around $1,000. So it's definitely gone up a fair bit since when I've purchased it, given that it's a 70. And there's only six known in the world at a 70. So definitely uh, very collectible. But given the occasion of the event being the coronation of King Charles, I think uh, over the long term, this will become a very significant coin to own uh, and to hold, where I think over time, these $2 coins are not going to be as collectible anymore because you won't see as many on the in the change. Let it also be said with the red poppies as well. They've made so many red poppies nowadays that they're not as collectible as well. So sometimes these ones can uh, not be as valuable up front, but in the long term uh, will hold a lot of value as well. So definitely getting coins uh, graded is a good thing as well. So this one here is one from 1895. Uh, unfortunately, this one had environmental damage on it, so it didn't uh, get any value from that. But for me, it was always just pretty cool to have that one because that was one that I had uh, passed down from generations. So I did it more for keeping it safe uh, from that point of view. And this is an old penny that I had as well. So this is from 1917. Again, another one that's like a family heirloom that I've uh, kept and was really keen to have it graded uh, more just to preserve the coin and look after it from that protecting point of view as well. You can also get good price guides uh, on coins as well. So in Australia, we have these kind of uh, books here that give you a bit of a price guide on how much uh, coins are and values of those coins as well. This is an older copy of that. So in America, I think there's a blue book and the red book. 
as well. So you can get different um, valuations as well. So it's definitely good to have some of these. These give you a, a genuine guide because sometimes on eBay you can get inflated prices as well on stuff that's uh, not really valuable. So I think one of the most popular ones is the HH $2 coin, which is the most circulated probably coin in Australian history, but yet people are trying to sell it for thousands of dollars on eBay when it's literally just worth face value as well. So there's some of those things you can look out for as well. Uh, also, other things it covers off is like stories around the Morgan dollar. So some of the significance around the Morgan dollar, definitely uh, from a coin uh, collecting and holding point of view, this has got some silver in it as well. So definitely got a bit of value around this. And this is from uh, 1888, so very significant year. Next, we cover off uh, coin hunting strategies and adventures as well. So for me, I love going to little uh, shops. You know, you often have those little shop um, secondhand shops in these little cute little towns and they've often got like a little tub of old coins as well so you can go through uh, i've got some coins here and you just go through them like this is uh, some older american coins as well and it's fun just looking through it and looking for special dates in there as well I'm trying to find the the significance of the coins as well so for me i really love uh going through these and just finding finding some stuff in there as well so sometimes you can get some special ones in australia we often have the, the pennies and other different coins as well it's just i really find it fun just to collect it and look for it and go oh yeah that's pretty cool um and it just shows the significance of some of those key uh, events uh, and key people within the, the culture of that country as well the book also covers step-by-step -step, uh detecting metal detecting as well which i found really really uh insightful so definitely being able to find um, coins in some old landmark ruin areas as well. It even goes through what kind of a detector you really need to look at and what kind of settings you need to have on the metal detector itself to look for your little coins as well, to making sure you're picking up the right size metal as well. And I found that really informative within the book to, to have that kind of detail in there as well. Next, we go into the realm of uh, connecting and negotiating. So joining a coin collecting community uh, a bit like uh, the community I've created on this YouTube channel. Uh, there's a lot of great Facebook uh, pages as well. So that's where I personally got in touch with Thomas as well. Uh, and that's he sent out the book through me as well. So it's having those communities online as well or going to coin shows as well. So I definitely love going to coin shows. There's one coming up. Uh, a big one in Melbourne in February that I'll be going to, but I also like going to those little community hall uh, coin shows as well. And you really get to speak to people and learn from people as well. I think that's the most important thing. As much as I've been doing coin collecting since I was a, a young kid, I still make mistakes all the time. I'm sure a lot of the viewers have seen me make mistakes as well. And that's okay, that's part of the community, that's part of learning, that's part of the approach as well. And that's what I love about this, uh, this hobby is there's always people there with uh, different types of knowledge that can teach you different perspectives of things as well, which is really, really good. Uh, he also goes through respectful negotiations as well. So that's one thing when it comes to selling uh, some of your prized possessions. Sometimes you have a lot of love for your special coins and you really want to see a good price for it. Uh, but the person at the other end just wants to make sure they get a, a reasonable cheap price. They don't want to be paying top price for it as well. So often there can be a bit of a disagreements in the price as well. So it's making sure you're respectful uh, in that negotiation process of selling some of your prized possessions and, and some of your coins that you've hunted for as well. So the next step he goes through is using what you've learned and starting to grow your collection as well. So make sure you set clear objectives and targets. So what are your objectives and targets for you? What kind of coins do you want to collect? Is it some silver bullion coins? Do you want to get some of those uh, from a coronation or significant events? Is there specific year sets that you're looking to collect as well and having all the coins from a certain year? Is it like in Australia, we've got the $2 colored coins. Is that something you're really looking uh, to collect as well? Uh, just having that defined kind of look at what you're trying to get and, and starting to learn about those kind of sets and those different coins and the different nuances within those coins as well. Because sometimes they might be similar coins like this, but they're actually slightly different. One will have a C, one doesn't have a C. Uh, they often have different year dates as well. So it's understanding which ones to look for in those kind of things as well. 
Uh, make sure you start with something affordable as well because the last thing you want to do is buy a coin that you think is really high end and you end up uh, over time losing on that coin as well. So making sure you, you start uh, with something that is uh, fair and reasonable and learn as you go as well. Another thing um, he covers off is making sure you uh, focus on quality, not limitability. So making sure it's not super rare, but making sure it's high quality as well. So things like this, where it's a, a perfect state uh, 70 is gonna add a lot more value than having this really, really old uh, coin from 1985 that's got environmental damage as well. So I'll probably uh, not get much money, if at all, for uh, trying to pass this one on, where this one, I know I'm gonna, in the long term, have a lot more value just because of its, yes, it's probably less rare, but the quality of it, because it's a 70, is definitely gonna reap a lot more rewards for me than having something that's older uh, and probably a bit more, limit, bit, bit more limited as well. Another thing it covers off is making sure you preserve your collection. So I personally like um, having all my coins in these like little um, plastic, uh, cases just to keep them uh, extra safe. Obviously my more favorite ones, I get them sent graded. Uh, and sometimes you can put them in these little uh, plastic uh, things just to also, these little flips, put them in these little flips uh, to keep them safe as well, stop them from scratching and getting any oils from your fingers as well. So depending on the coin as well, but I personally, as you can see, unless it's something like this that um, it really doesn't matter because this one's only got the value from the silver content. It doesn't matter about uh, any scratches or dings in it as well. The next section in the book, he, he covers off unveiling numismatics, mysteries, uh, rare and unusual coins. And that's something that I really, really like uh, about this book as well, is it really gives you that kind of mystery, kind of fun and adventure of going through some old coins uh, and looking through uh, the mysteries of the coins, the ancient ruins and some of the old coins from the some of the old days as well and just trying to find those special mysteries of coins so i think that's kind of a fun thing when you when you find a coin uh when you walk around and you go what the heck is this coin where's this one from as well i think that's really really neat and they kind of the the way he uh, story tells through that book is something that uh, i definitely really enjoy and it gets you a bit more excited about coin collecting uh as you go through it as well so I think to add to that, it's also the legends of lost coins. So we've probably all heard of these uh, videos and these things where there's legends of lost coins and lost treasures as well, and the quest for the holy grail of coins as well. So I think some going through some of those uh, stories and some factual stories in there as well uh, really adds to the, to the fun of the hobby of coin collecting as well. Uh, he also covers off uh, coins as historical treasures as well. So stories within coins as well. So I think a perfect example is this coronation one where in 20, 30 years time, we'll be talking about the coronation of the king and this will hold a significant story uh, for that as well. And I've got some other coins here as well. So uh, this one was the opening of Parliament House, uh, the first Parliament House back in Australia in 1927 uh, as well. So when you see this coin, you straight away know the story of it and the meaning of the coin as well. And I think that's really significant uh, sometimes as well. So we have another one here, this the one crown as well. So I just love some of the storytellings uh, that you do get with these coins as well. He also covers off the artistry of coins. So it's looking at some of these coins and especially nowadays, the modern designs and some of the details and uh, nuances that uh, they can put in coins. Uh, it just makes these coins really pop out. So just the artistry of some of the, the, not so much the modern day coins as well, but also some of the old coins as well. So like this one here, just the design uh, that they've put into this coin as well is really, really beautiful as well. So I, I just love seeing some of the beautiful pictures and imagery that have been placed into the coins as well. And some of the history that it really holds as well. So I think, um, that's something that I really like uh, about this as well, is it just goes through some of that nuances and some of the beauty of coin design and, and collecting as well. Lastly, we go into the unveiling of coin collecting legends as well. So some of the legends of collecting collections over the years as well. So some of the collections that we've seen uh, from kings and queens that have held collections and famous people of 
history and some of the modern trailblazers and modern famous people that we, we know and see on TV and in the media as well and some of their incredible collections that they have as well uh, really goes through all those kind of things as well which really gives you a real pride of your hobby as well for me I found that uh, reading that and reading some of the people that are also very genuinely interested in coin collecting gives you that kind of uh, excitement uh, that you're on to doing something that's really uh, famous and that's really a massive community if you think about it worldwide as well also covering off uh, passing the torch onto future legends as well so making sure that this legacy of coin collecting uh, doesn't die off just because uh, cash isn't in the tills as much as it used to be people are using phones to pay for things nowadays uh, buy things online making sure we do educate our children and our kids um, and the next generation uh, to make sure they're really excited about coin collecting as well so I know for, personally for my family as well I'm buying uh, some of the kids some uh, special coins that I'll uh, be passing on to them as well, especially not this one obviously, because this one's uh, got a bit of value in it, but definitely some of the other coins as well. So I know I got one of these very similar ones, um, that was the baby dragon half ounce as well that I passed on to my little one. So what I loved most about this book is, I think it's the storytelling. So where a lot of the other books that I've seen when it comes to coin collecting as well, is it really just covers off some of the key facts and details it doesn't give you that kind of history storytelling kind of component which is what we fell in love with so it really took me back into when i was a young kid coin collecting some of the fun things i used to have with my dad and my grandfather having all these story times around coins and all these special traditions like with kids having the tooth fairy or putting a, a coin in the pudding and just all those kind of things that brings back those kind of childhood memories of the coins uh, when you're a kid as well and I really love that about that kind of storytelling within the book as well I found that really really uh, good and I, I really enjoyed it as well if you're really really interested in buying the book um, definitely go to the link down below that'll take you straight to the Amazon uh, page where the book is located and purchase it from there as well I'd like to give a very special thanks to Thomas Knowles for sending me a copy of this before it was officially released uh, you've done an amazing job uh, on the book and you're doing a great job for our coin collecting community as well so thank you very much for that uh, please let me know if you're going to buy the book uh, yourself uh, I definitely know I'm going to be buying a hard copy for myself as well I think it's really uh, something neat to have around home uh, to read as well uh, and let me know what your favorite part of the book is once you purchase as well and if anyone's reading as well I'd love to know uh, what you personally think about it as well uh, please don't forget to click subscribe if you're interested in more videos on coin collecting thanks for watching and joining the coin collecting community See you in my next video, Dan.